What's poppin' my fellow gamers? It's the Chronicles of Cynic here, and we're gonna be going right into some story time, cause you know what? I'm bored, and I felt like, you know what? I'm gonna share some stories, even if they're not that interesting, cause I've told them to some of the people I work with, not coworkers, just people I work with, um, cause that makes sense. Uh, and they, they seem to find the, the stories interesting and humorous and whatnot. But, you know, some people, they just try to ingratiate themselves so they pretend to care. Um, so I figured I'd share it here for a more unbiased opinion from the lovely and intelligent minds of YouTube commenters. Um, and uh, ba basically this happened maybe, I don't know, maybe like a month ago or something like that. I don't really know. My concept of time is kind of AIDS about as accurate as using a toaster as a compass but I recall this one gal um, was staying at the hotel that I was guarding and uh, already we're, in, we're treading in some interesting territory with that um, and uh, th this this person had rented a Hertz van or something like that you could tell she was from Cali because you know, her license plate and whatnot. That's where she got the rental from. And uh, she was, you know, trying to excuse the fact that she had a rental. She kept ranting to the front desk that, you know, oh, I saved $500 by renting this vehicle. Either way, those details are not important to the story, but I'm just trying to, you know, fluff it up a bit so that there's more exposition so I can bore you longer. Um, anyway, this gal, uh, I found out her name was Barbara. We'll get into that in just a second, though. Um, her name may as well have been Karen. Uh, you could probably see where the story is going, though. Um, I just thought the whole situation was hilarious. Um, didn't really take any personal offense, but, uh, man, she was annoying. And, uh, that's, that's what makes this job worth it, you know? Is the occasional crackhead who goes into the parking lot and makes some weird claims. Um, anyway... In the past, at this hotel, she had claimed that they were putting some, like, drug into the air system and feeding it through the vents to drug her, and she made a complaint to the front desk. She was like, you guys are trying to drug me for through the ventilation system, and uh, needless to say, she was banned from ever being able to rent a room at that hotel. Um... Unfortunately, uh, the new person who, you know, was able to book her didn't realize that she was literally blacklisted and uh, let her rent another room. So she comes in with this Hertz van uh, and she's taken up like three parking spots. She's parked like super crooked. It's not like she's parked sideways. So, you know, uh, she because her van was just too big or something like that. Because we get that all the time, you know, when people have trailers, there's clearly not enough room, so they have to park all jaggedy and whatnot. Yeah, no, she didn't She didn't have to. She could have just pulled in normally, but she chose to take up three parking spots. Luckily, it wasn't too much of an issue, except for the fact that the hotel is literally booked uh, 365 all the time. Um... You know what, that detail is not really important, but I'm trying to remember the whole story as I'm telling it. And that's the interesting thing about storytelling, unedited, is you forget some of the details, and you have the choice of either embellishing it or just having dead air and trying to remember what the hell happened. Um, I choose the latter, because I'm all about accuracy when it comes to history, unlike uh, textbooks and stuff like that. So let's see. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, I'm, I'm guarding this hotel, and one night she's, like, fumbling around in her car. Uh, honestly thought that this female was uh, some random dude. Um, and it was dark out. It was hard to tell. I, I wouldn't have been able to know either way. Um, and also considering the voice, you know, I just went kind of to the default, because that's just what I was used to with Navy stuff, you know, you, you just say, sir or ma'am, and if you're incorrect, then they correct you, they just say, oh, it's ma'am, not sir, you're an idiot, and then you go on with your life, 
uh, cry yourself to sleep because you embarrassed yourself in front of Master Chief or something like that. But that doesn't really matter. What does matter is this person was fumbling around in uh, her vehicle for like half an hour or something like that and I'm like okay well now I actually have to do my job that's epic so I step away from my car because I'd been just leaning against it kind of looking in into the parking lot and whatnot making sure no one's causing havoc no crackheads are just you know rummaging through the through the trash can for a used needle so that they can scare the kitties right um and uh you know, I just casually approach the vehicle. You know, I'm not not going towards the vehicle per se, just in the general direction because it's part of my rove, just walking around the property. So I'm kind of walking in that direction, not approaching, just roundabouts that, that way. And uh, she had come out of her vehicle with a dog. <laughs> and uh, the interesting thing about most hotels is if you have a pet, you have to pay a fee so that that pet can stay in the room with you. Um, you know, as a kind of just in case, you know, if your dog craps in your room, you know, it's going to cost a little more because, you know, they got to they gotta clean up because you don't know how to take care of your own pet. Um, and I guess her dog had been in her car uh, until like 2 a.m. Uh, you know, responsible pet owner, I'm sure. Um, just leaving her dog in her Hertz van that she rented from Cali for, you know, what, six hours? Yeah, that's definitely safe and good for the dog. Um, she takes her dog out. She's walking towards the hotel, and, you know, I'm just, like, kind of on my patrol route. And then she sees me, and she freaks out. She's all like, do not approach me! You know, she was obviously yelling, but I don't want to yell in my car because I don't want to seem like a lunatic. Um, unlike her, she had no, you know, reservation when it came to that. Although she did have a reservation for a room. She just, you know, left out that neat little detail that she also had a pet. So what she was doing essentially was sneaking her pet in. And, uh, I caught her unintentionally. I didn't even know what she was doing. I just happened to be there when, uh, she was doing some sketchy stuff. Yeah, because she didn't pay that deposit for having a pet. She was trying to get around that by bringing the pet in super late at night when uh, everyone else was asleep except for me, for obvious reasons. And, uh, yeah, um, kept repeating that, kept shouting, like, do not approach me. And I was like, I I'm not approaching you. And I stood still and even backed up a couple feet and she repeated again, do not approach me. And I'm like, why are, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You're approaching me, therefore I'm approaching you. Yep, that's definitely accurate. Um, either way, very unpleasant encounter, but I just thought it was the funniest thing ever. So I just went to the front desk and I was all like, hey, did you see that one person who was screaming? You know, that one dude who was just like, hey, do not approach me. And then uh, the front desk was all like, that's a woman, and uh, I immediately felt like a, a, a dummy, a big dummy, but um, either way, that detail didn't really matter, but that's when I learned about, you know, the background behind this interesting character that was, uh, you know, neglecting her animal in her van, um, and uh, yeah, no, she wasn't able to uh, get away with sneaking her pet in, so naturally, the next time she came out to walk her dog she tried to like, I don't know, rat me out, if that makes sense. No, that doesn't quite make sense. Essentially, this individual came out again, and you know, it's not very common at 3 a.m. to have someone walking around in the parking lot with a headlamp on, looking between the cars. Uh, needless to say, it was a suspicious activity going on. So, I got up again to do my job and just, you know, check it out. You know, just say, hey, what's going on? Hey, y'all you, you you good? Um, no, it was our lovely Barbara. <laughs> and <laughs> I scared the crap out of her. Do not approach me yet again. Um, and then this individual was all like, what are you doing here? Why are you just leaning up against your car and whatnot? 
and I was all like, I'm security. And I turned around, showed her my back to show that I was literally wearing security uniform with the big, bold security on my back. Like, it was literally written on my back. To miss it would mean you'd have to be blind. And I would understand, you know, oh, it's dark out. Yes, but this uh, individual, Barbara, was wearing a headlamp and shining it directly at me. So, yeah, no, she definitely saw that I was wearing a security uniform. And then she started asking all these questions all like, uh, show me your ID or something like that. And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I have a driver's license. I have a VA card. I mean, I don't know what you want to see. Like, and I don't really have to show you anything. I still have rights as a citizen. Uh, I'm not just gonna, you know, bend over for you and just be all like, yeah, no, I'll give you anything you want, ma'am, to make you comfortable. But don't worry, I'll be sure to sprint in the opposite direction while throwing my credentials at you because otherwise I'd be approaching you if I showed you my ID. Um, yeah, she was very unpleasant, uh, but I still thought it was just the funniest thing. And then... After she's done walking her dog, I see her go to the front. And it was around the time when I was going to check in with the front desk again, because, you know, checking in periodically throughout the night, make sure that everything's quiet in the lobby, there aren't any noise complaints or any other complaints like that. And, um, I happened to be checking in at the front uh, around the same time that this Barbara was checking in and that's actually how I learned her name because when she got in uh, since she had a key card I always have to be buzzed in because I don't have a room key to swipe in so I just have to press the intercom they see that it's me and then they can let me in uh, so naturally I didn't really have a way in and uh, she thought this was very suspicious despite the fact that you know I literally stated multiple times I am the security for this place you can talk to the front desk they can assert that I can tell you my company name I have my schedule all this stuff like it was very obvious what I was doing there and if I wanted to steal a car realistically think about it like this why would I wait for six hours to steal one car that doesn't really make any sense um, I'd probably want to do it quickly and quietly and not you know be shining my flashlight throughout the entire parking lot and just romping around that's not really the best method of uh stealing you want to have stealth hence you know that the fact that steal is literally in the word stealth you should probably be stealthy if you want to steal something um i'm not saying you should i'm just saying you know realistically speaking it didn't make sense what she was claiming but then again she was also asserting the last time that she was there that she was being drugged through the vents so that's the kind of character we're dealing with here and uh, when she was in the lobby, she decided to contact the management. And uh, that's when I unintentionally learned her name because I was waiting to be buzzed in. But I could see through the glass window and hear her conversation over the phone. And uh, that's when I learned her name. Um, and uh, yeah, she was freaking out. She was like, yeah, no, there's this really sketchy guy and whatnot. And uh, she was referring to me. And... Um, she also made fun of the fact that I said I was a vet, um, even though, you know, it, it was just kind of a disrespectful thing that she was going for. I don't know why. Like, I, all I said was, I have a VA card and a driver's license. Those are the only IDs that I carry around on me. And I mean, I think what she was trying to refer to was seeing my guard card, which I didn't have at the time because I was still on, you know, a probationary period to earn my guard card. Because, um, well... I was a new guy. So all the stars aligned and uh, she didn't get what she wanted because what she was saying didn't make any sense. And then she gave up over the phone despite the fact that she didn't even finish her complaint. She was in the middle of her complaint and then she just kind of gave up and she was like, that's it, I'm not dealing with this. I'm just gonna go to my room and hope he doesn't break in and try to murder everyone. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit of an exaggeration, needless to say. Uh, then the front desk eventually, you know, uh, got up and buzzed me in, 
and I uh, let him know what happened, and it was uh, interesting. He thought it was funny too, and um, yeah, it, the story didn't quite end there. Uh, that's where it ended for that night, but I found out the next day that the entire day, I don't know if she even slept. I, I you know, I don't think she did because she kept going to the front desk during the poor day shift guy's entire shift and just saying oh that guy last night yada 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 is he really security and then he's like yeah the guy was who was wearing a literal security uniform and then she was like oh he wasn't wearing any of that um which was you know an interesting detail that she kind of threw in there because i literally showed her I don't know how more obvious you can get when you're wearing a shirt that literally has in big bold letters on the back security I'm not entirely sure how you miss that especially when you have a headlamp because you know normally you'd be all like oh it was dark out no that's not an excuse because she was literally looking while I showed her my back and gave the assertion and showed her my hat and the shirt I was wearing, which also had the company name on it, as well as security. So, yeah, she was embellishing her story a little bit to make me seem less credible and like I was actually a threat. To the point where he was actually asking, was there anyone out last night? And I was like, nope, I was the only person out last night. And that encounter that she had told the uh, day shift guy, um, yeah, no, it was, uh, Total BS, as it turns out, unsurprisingly. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else happened. But uh, that that was pretty much the entirety of this story. Yeah, I know, you have all this build-up, and then it ends up just being a dud. But um, she ended up leaving. Uh, she still should be blacklisted, although there's probably going to be a new guy who lets her make a reservation anyway. But, yeah, no, uh, basically... That was my first encounter with a Karen as a security guard, which I never thought I would have to really deal with considering I work overnight shifts, but she was, she didn't sleep like ever, uh, which didn't make sense to me. But yeah, the fact that she um, basically neglected her dog in the van just so she could get away with not paying the pet fee, even though she was going to be staying there multiple nights anyway and she would have been caught regardless. Uh, but the fact that I was the one to catch her, even though it was unintentional, she put all the blame on me, she exaggerated her stories, and uh, yeah, she was trying to get me in trouble, although it didn't really work because I had all my credentials. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, she was she was an interesting character. Not one I would want to deal with, like, ever, but you know. It is what it is. It's it's part of what I signed up for. Actually, no, it's not. It's definitely not what I signed up for. But you have to prepare for the worst, right? So, uh, yeah, that I think that was all I really wanted to talk about with that story. I have more stories like this. Let me know if you like story time. Story time with Wolfie Boy. Because uh, SD, he un he didn't feel like telling stories. I tell all the stories. Even Platt doesn't tell stories. He's, he's lame. Uh, yeah. And, oh, quick little announcement. Uh, my friend and I, I actually don't know when we're starting this, but we're going to be doing some neat little, like, like a, a new video series. And I think it'll be interesting because I want to branch out. Because doing just ASMR, you know, I don't want it to become tiring. Uh, I want to keep doing some more stuff, you know, keep it fresh. Um, but uh, we're going to be doing some, like, restaurant review kind of thing, but it's going to be with a little bit of a twist, and we'll get into that twist as the time comes. Uh, but essentially, we're going to be going for, like, all the meal deals kind of thing, and just rate, you know, because you, you go to Olive Garden or something like that, $9.99, Endless soup, breadstick, and salad, you know, kind of rating that, you know, what, what's the value you get, how many of what you get do you have to eat in order to, you know, run the restaurant out of business kind of thing, that's essentially what it's going to be like, so look forward, look forward to that, <laughs> I just died real quick, I'm back, 
Um, yeah, see you in the next one. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. It's probably going to do very poorly because, you know, it's not freaking ASMR. Uh, which, you know, has some popularity on YouTube. Just ranting ra about random BS is not a popular thing. So, um, yeah, feel free to leave your thoughts down below. And uh, see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.